Mandatum novum do vobis. A new commandment I give to you. The word mondi is a shortened form of the Latin word mandatum, which means command. Mondi Thursday is all about this command which Jesus gives his disciples during the Last Supper. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Out of the seven sacraments, today we celebrate the institution of two sacraments, the Eucharist and the priesthood. Jesus' instruction of you also ought to wash one another's feet highlights the service aspect of these sacraments. In the first reading taken from the book of Exodus, we have the narrative of the Passover which is at the heart of the Exodus experience. A stubborn Pharaoh was reluctant to allow the Israelites to leave Egypt despite nine plagues. The tenth plague will be the most fatal and will force Pharaoh to act. It will involve the death of something that people hold very dear, their firstborn, including that of their livestock. The people of Israel are given instructions for the observance of the Passover. Each household is to take an unblemished one-year-old male, sheep or goat, roast and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This meal is not to be had leisurely as you would in a restaurant, but rather in haste. More than the meat, it is the blood of the lamb which is of significance. It is to be smeared on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses as a sign. The blood serves as a sign first of all for the Israelites, but more importantly, a sign for Yahweh, who will see the blood and pass over each Israelite house. In the New Testament, Christ becomes our Passover who is sacrificed for us. St. Paul emphasizes, for our Paschal Lamb, Christ has been sacrificed. John the Baptist drew on a similar image when he said of Jesus, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the unblemished Passover Lamb, not stained by any sin that atoned for our sin. In the second reading taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, Paul reminds the Corinthians about the true nature of the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper was an early form of what is known today as the Eucharist. As Paul's knowledge came from sharing the Lord's Supper with his fellow Christians, the words of institution that Paul recites are probably the actual words that the earliest Christians used in their liturgical practice. Three main ideas are drawn together here. The first is thanksgiving, which in Greek is Eucharistia. The Lord's Supper is a thanksgiving for the saving death of Christ. The second is remembrance. The Greek word used is anamnesis. It's important to note that this does not refer to merely recalling a past event, example remembering what I had for lunch yesterday. Instead, anamnesis is to make a past event present now. This is why we can say that the bread and wine actually become the body and blood of Christ. Anamnesis helps us understand why the church has always thought that Christ is not re-sacrificed at each Mass, but that we enter into that one moment in history when He was scourged for our offenses and wounded for our sins. Jesus' moment of offering on the cross becomes present and real. The third idea is covenant, the Greek for which is diatheke. The reference to the new covenant implies a relationship of mutual honor and responsibility between God and believers. Those who eat and drink the Lord's Supper make present and proclaim the good news. In the Gospel taken from John, we have the narrative of Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Unlike the Synoptic Gospels, in place of Jesus' words over the bread and wine, John has the washing of the disciples' feet. 
as was customary in those times it was the non israelite slaves who had to wash the feet of the guests it was a task too menial to be considered even by an israelite slave what is more astounding than jesus taking the role of a slave and washing the dirty feet of his disciples is the fact that he does so knowing full well that they will all desert him when he needs them the most Jesus insists on washing the feet of Peter knowing full well that Peter will deny him. Jesus washes the feet of Judas knowing that Judas has already conspired to betray him. Jesus example suggests that loving as he loved means caring for the needs of others and acting lovingly without expecting anything in return. And we have to do this not only for those who treat us well but even for those who hurt and betray us the deepest meaning of the foot washing has to do with the cross jesus is preparing the disciples for his cross and his humble service at this table is a foretaste of the larger act of humble service that he will render there though an integral part of the sacraments of priesthood and eucharist is service the ground realities leave a lot to be desired Jesus gives himself in the Eucharist. He gives us his body and blood. We who celebrate the Eucharist are called upon to give ourselves to others in service. Unfortunately, the Eucharist is treated by many as a ritual which one has to complete. Attendance at mass is dwindling and I have seen at various parishes that people prefer standing outside with their friends instead of sitting inside the church when the service is going on. then there are also those who attend mass and sit next to each other but are not on talking terms this is not what the eucharist is meant to be priests are to be an altar christus that is another christ a man for others however many a time they get caught up in clericalism and the desire for power and end up bossing over and isolating themselves from the very people they are meant to serve. Though we talk a lot about a synodal church where all of us walk together, my interactions with people have made me realize that there exists an ever widening gap between the clergy and the faithful. None of us is perfect. Being fallible humans, we all have our weaknesses. We all have in some degree a desire to be in control and dominate others rather than serve them let this monday thursday be a time to reconcile with each other and experience the beauty of the gift of the sacraments of the eucharist and priesthood may we truly be able to love each other as christ has loved us may god bless us all